Today what we're going to do is we're going to look at a couple of reactions that teachers use to demonstrate Le Chatelier's principle and dynamic equilibriums. One reaction that teachers generally use to demonstrate Le Chatelier's principle and dynamic equilibriums is to react the cobalt chloride salt with water to produce the cobalt ion in solution with four chloride ions. This reaction is used very commonly because of the drastic color change moving from the blue cobalt chloride ions to the pink cobalt hydrated ion. Two other reactions that are also very commonly used because of their color changes is to react the orange dichromate ion with water to produce the yellow chromate ion and hydrogen ions or to react the iron ion with thiocyanide to produce the iron cyanide complex. These three reactions are all used because of their color changes and because of their use and the ability to demonstrate Le Chatelier's principle in dynamic equilibriums. What we're going to do is we're going to examine two other reactions that could also be used to demonstrate Le Chatelier's principle. However, the byproducts of these reactions are non-toxic and non-hazardous to human health or to the environment. The first reaction we're going to do is going to involve starch and iodine. To do this experiment, what we're going to do is we're going to take a clean, empty, dry 250 milliliter beaker and we're going to place in it just a few seconds squirt of a laundry starch that in fact is water soluble. To that we will then add approximately 150 milliliters of water. We'll then add three drops of iodine to the solution in order to produce our starch iodine complex. We will then take that solution and we're going to place it into three test tubes to produce three different solutions. The first solution We'll place about 30 milliliters into an ice bath at approximately 5 degrees Celsius. The second solution will be our control and we'll place approximately 30 milliliters into a beaker and maintain it at room temperature. The third solution will be put into a warm water bath at approximately 80 degrees. Now because this equilibrium does involve energy, and in fact the forward reaction is an exothermic reaction and the reverse reaction is endothermic, the addition or removal of, en of energy is going to shift this equilibrium. Le Chatelier's principle states that any stress placed on an equilibrium will cause a shift in the equilibrium to reduce that stress. By stressing that reaction, either by chilling it or by heating it, is going to result in a, in a change in the position of the equilibrium. If we examine our warm water solution, we see that in fact the colored starch iodine complex has almost completely shifted away when compared to our control and when we can compare our chilled sample to our control that in fact we see that the equilibrium has shifted, has shifted to produce more of the starch iodine complex. This equilibrium can be shifted back and forth multiple times and in fact, if we wanted to, we could shift our chilled sample to our warm sample and go back to the clear if that was what we wanted to do. Now, a second reaction that we could do involves a T, a black T hydrogen ion complex. To demonstrate this one, what we will do is we'll take three test tubes. To each of the test tubes, we will add approximately one milliliter of steeped tea that has been cooled down to room temperature. To the first sample, what we're going to do is we're going to acidify it by adding a little bit of vinegar. Adding the vinegar is going to increase the hydrogen ion concentration and affect the position of the equilibrium.
Our second solution we will maintain as our control. And our third solution, we are going to remove hydrogen ion concentration by adding a base to the solution. The base that we'll be adding will be household ammonia. Referring back to our equilibrium, the addition or removal of hydrogen ions are going to cause our equilibrium to shift in either the forward or reverse reaction to remove that stress that we've placed on our equilibrium. If we compare our acidified sample to our control, we see that in fact the T has gotten significantly lighter, indicating the shift towards the forward reaction. If we compare it to the solution where we have removed the hydrogen ions, we see that it is in fact significantly darker. For a copy of this lab activity and other lab activities that could be used as replacements for labs that you're currently doing in your high school class that involve non-toxic, non-hazardous materials that are not hazardous to human health or the environment, please visit our webpage at www.beyondbenign.org.